I started thinking about this question of what does success in language learning look like? And the most obvious answer and one of the most commonly given answers is fluency. Now, wrong, okay? But another fairly commonly given answer is reaching your goals in that language. That's a little better. I would say that it's still not the whole picture. I'm gonna say that the real answer sounds cheesy and the problem with cheesy things is that we dismiss them, like that whole thing about yesterday's history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift and that's why it's called the present. That doesn't, that we hate that, right? Because it uses a linguistic coincidence that is present to tell us that today is a gift. Now today may well be a gift, that bit might be true, but that saying doesn't make it true. So we hear that and we just sort of roll our eyes. So listen to the cheesy bit and then I will give you a very concrete example to help you actually get what I'm talking about. I would say that success is both a journey and a mindset. The journey is no good without the right mindset. The mindset is no good without continuing the journey. It's cheesy, I know. But here is an example, and I apologize for using myself and my own YouTube channel as an example, but the good thing about YouTube channels for this is that they're extremely tangible. Unlike language learning, where we kind of have these levels but we don't really know what they mean all the time, like A2, B1, you can be different in different areas. It's, it's just, it's all over the place. We don't have numbers like we do with YouTube channels. With YouTube channels, we've got views, we've got subscribers, we've got views from different parts of the world, retention time, all this stuff. The bad thing about that is that it makes people compare themselves a lot and you think that people are bigger than you are just because they have more views or more subscribers. That doesn't necessarily make them better or you think that people are worse than you are, that doesn't, right? That's bad for YouTube channels, but it's good for this example. So listen, most people watching this will not know that recently this channel has seen a stupidly steep increase in the number of views and subscribers. I won't bore you with all the numbers, but at the beginning of the year, I had a goal to get the channel by the end of the year to around 20,000 views a day. Now, the other day, I got 40,000 views in one day, and it has since dropped off again since, but it's still hovering just above 20,000 a day. So, my goal is reached in May, right? Time to relax. No, see, that's an unsuccessful mindset. That is treating the goal as the destination, as an end point. Success is actually measured by what I do now. And this is exactly the same in language learning, right? I bet if you've been studying your language for over a year now, at some point, a native speaker has told you that you're basically fluent. Matt versus Japan has indicated the same thing. He says that when your Japanese is bad, they'll be act impressed about how good it is. And when it's actually good, they'll tell you that it's better than a native speaker's. Now, this is just a thing that happens. It's not a bad thing necessarily, but at the same time, it's not an indicator of success. Success is what you do with that then. Just like my YouTube channel, okay? Okay, great, I've reached my goal, as I put, said it, in May. That's not an indicator that I can then relax for the rest of the year and do whatever. Now that's an indicator for me of, so, like, let's really step things up now. I've now got the platform that I can actually do the things that I originally wanted to and make really good language learning videos. And what happens when YouTube promotes those? Because in my opinion, YouTube's been promoting like four or five videos of mine that are terrible but they're the ones getting the views and the subscribers. So imagine if I could make like 15 really good videos by the end of the year and YouTube starts promoting those. See, success is about a, a mindset and a journey. <laughs> and I'm applying exactly the same thing to my Swedish now and I'm hoping that you're applying it with your language. See, I've had Swedes telling me that I'm basically fluent in Swedish since like week eight of studying. Basically the entire time I've been studying Swedish, Swedes have been telling me I was fluent. And back then, I made this horrible mistake that I cringe at now. You know what it was? It was to believe them and kind of think, yeah, I've got this Swedish thing pretty down. And it's just, oh, it's gross. I hate even thinking about it. And it also led me to take up French after a year of studying Swedish, which I would not do if I had my time over again. But here's the thing. My now successful mindset, or I would say successful mindset, says, well, okay, if you still got pretty okay at French and Swedish in three and a half years of studying both at the same time, which I wouldn't do again, 
and not even very well and far from every day and using all these techniques that didn't work, imagine what is possible now, now that you're studying one language, that you're studying frequently and like every day and a lot and using far more advanced techniques. That's what I mean about a success mindset, right? You success, successful mindset where you take on what you've already done and saying, well, imagine what I can do now. So I want you to have a think for yourself about where you are with your language learning and what mistakes you've made in the past because we've all made mistakes. But think about, okay, let's say you got to some kind of level in your language having made those mistakes, whether it was to study seven languages at the same time, whether it was to just study for six minutes a day, for eight years or whatever you've done wrong, you've probably still gotten somewhere with that. You've gotten some kind of rewarding thing out of learning Spanish to this level or learning Portuguese to X level, whatever. You've gotten something out of it. So imagine what is possible if you do things better from now. It doesn't mean doing things perfectly all the time. There's no such thing. But if it's possible to get to where you've gotten to doing things badly and knowing about those mistakes, imagine what's possible now. That's what I want you to think about. Now, I hope this video wasn't too kind of Tony Robbins for you. I know it's a bit, I don't really like talking in this kind of way, but it's just something that I've been thinking about through YouTube and through my Swedish. Like, I'm just so excited about what's possible now that I've made the mistakes that I've already made. And now that I'm focusing on doing things differently and doing things better, I'm really excited about what I've got planned for language learning and this channel. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I will see you next time. Hey, Dora.